All right, so these are going to be our notes on Kepler's laws. And uh, so we're kind of finishing up uh, rotation, gravity, and this kind of ties into that. So uh, rotational motion is just uh, the movement of a, an object around a central axis. And uh, how these, in the end, how gravity and Kepler's law tie in is the idea that that's really how planets move and, and the forces that's of gravity that interacts between those, you know, large bodies, uh, causes that motion. And, uh, now Newton predicted, or said you could figure out the force that exists between objects. So F of G, universal law of gravity, and that's just G times the mass of one of the objects, the mass of the other object, and then the radius squared. So that's kind of the equation for it. He could tell us, and now Newton could tell us the force. We could figure that out, and it was really a, accurate. So, uh, and he really based a lot of his work on Johann Kepler, and was able to use Kepler's calculations to prove or to check his equation. And uh, so we're going to kind of learn about these laws uh, that he's credited with developing. So if we go back to erase here, and so there's really three. The first law says planets travel in an ellipse. An ellipse is just an elongated circle. I'm going to show you one in a minute. This is really kind of elongated. But they have um, these foci. So a circle, we're going to say that, this isn't a perfect circle, but it has a center, one point, and then the same distance to all of the outside of the circle. No matter where you measure on this circle, it's the same distance. Well, instead of having one of these, it has two. So, and there's some different things going on. So we don't have this center point where all the distances are equal. We actually have a center point where this one is actually closer than these ones. Okay, And they can be very subtle, but uh, maybe not such, uh, such a great distance or difference. But uh, these are ellipses, they're called. And through his data collection, uh, he was able to determine that the plants don't travel in this circle that they originally thought, but they travel in like a slightly off uh, or elongated circle called an ellipse. And if we went and looked at one of these uh, ideas, we could say right here, I'm going to go out of this too. So if we go here, and here is this idea, the first law. The orbits of these planets are ellipses with the sun at the one of the focus, or foci. So we have this ellipse. It has these two foci that help define where everything is in the circle. It's, you know, length and width, or whatever you want to call it. And so the a planet going around this is on the outside, and then one of the focus is going to be the sun. Okay, and so this makes it form an ellipse. Okay, and if we see down here, uh, there's some different terms that uh, you can use to refer to uh, objects that are orbiting around another object in an ellipse. Uh, there's a phalon, that means the point that's furthest away from the object, uh, like the sun, and then there's perihelion, that's the point that's closest. Okay, and let's go back to the notes here. So the first law says uh, planets travel in an ellipse, an elongated circle, and that it's almost circular, but not quite. And then the sun is at one of the focal points. And then the closest point we call the perihelion, and then the aphelion is the farthest point. And we can look at that diagram again if you want. And so that's the first law. Ellipses are the orbit shape for planets, or when they orbit around one another body. Okay, the second law is this idea that planets travel faster when they, when they are closer to the star or the sun. And this is because of the pull of gravity. I'm going to try to show you this to you real quick. Uh, if you don't quite get it, that's all right too. But maybe it'll help you understand it. But so, and he was able to just look at his data and say, man, when it's moving here, it moves, seems to move quicker than when it's further away. Okay. So, and uh, this helped, uh, Newton proved his law of universal gravity because of the effects that being closer to the sun caused on the planets. 
Okay, and this is this main idea that we know what the equation for gravity is if you write it down here. Here we sis. So uh, this law of universal gravitation says f of g, and I've written this before, I'll rewrite it again, is g. So mass one, mass two, then radius squared. So this has a direct effect on this, not direct but indirect. So whatever this does, this does the opposite. Okay. So when the radius is really great, this force of gravity goes down. And then also when this is really smaller, this goes up. Okay, and it's just the laws of algebra. So and these being equal, the mass of the sun and the earth are never going to change. This is all equal. So these two behave these are really never going to change it when you're talking about two bodies, but the radius could change, and it's saying if it's closer, then this goes up, and if this is greater, it goes down. Okay, and so let me show you that. It's kind of a, how it works. Maybe I can explain this. I hope I can a little bit. And okay, so let me erase this as well. So here is the Earth, let's say. And it's going around the sun. Okay. And if we were going to break this this movement into two uh, components, we would say that the sun is pulling straight this way, with the force of gravity, right? And there's a force of gravity of the Earth, but if let's just say this is the net force of the gravity on the on the Earth. And then there's a tangential velocity that goes with it. Okay. Now, when this is straight on like this, and it's 90 degrees, then this is straight, and there are no other other factors. We don't have to worry about is there is gravity acting equally when it's at 90 degrees? It is. So this all the gravity is going directly towards the sun. Okay. And then we but if we move it somewhere else, so we put it right here. So now the force of gravity actually is at an angle, okay, and this is still going that straight away, right, that tangential velocity. So really what we have here is we have a vector, and what that means is we can take this angle force, this force of gravity, and we can break it into vectors. And we, if we did that, we would see that there's a straight force on the y going up due to the force of gravity, but also there's a force going this way. Okay, So then, uh, so we have two, we have this on the y, oh, let me get, undo that one more time. So we have this y force for gravity, and then we have this x, but you can see this one's backwards, so this causes this velocity to slow down, because the force of gravity is actually acting against it. To, you know, directly to some degree as it pulls on the Earth, but also it pulls it towards the center as well. Okay, so this causes this to slow down. And then when it gets here, this force is all directly towards the sun. So here's its slowest point. And then we come over here, the same thing is happening too. So I'm going to kind of draw this again. I'm going to erase this other stuff. So the same thing here is same thing. So we have the force of gravity from the sun and uh, this is going this way, right? And we could break this again into vector. So it has a, a y component that's towards this way, and then it has an x component that goes this way. So it actually adds to the speed of the planet and makes it go faster, okay? So then when it's over here, they're like almost, you know, perfect and it goes the fastest. So from that idea we can say when it's right here this is the fastest it's going and when it's right here this is the slowest. Okay, And that's kind of Kepler's second law. Okay, And, and because of that, because of that uh, difference in speed uh, they move a different amount of time because they're going slower. But Kepler's law, second law, says when they're doing that they still measure out this they still cover the same amount of area inside here. 
Okay, and this part of the law isn't as important because really the idea we want to understand is that this gravity pulling on the earth affects its speed. Okay, and we can kind of prove it by checking the area, but we would see that they're equal to each other. But the main idea of this is is that the the speed of these objects when they're orbiting around another object change as they move away or towards the earth. That's really the main part of this law. Okay, so if we go back, so let's add this. I'm going to erase some of this stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> so this law, this is the main part of it. Okay, they travel faster when closer, slower when farther away. Okay, then we have to find the third law, and this says. <clears throat> The distance, um, and, it's, and really it's asking, how does the distance affect the amount of time it takes to complete an orbit? So if we go back to this uh, here, so we go to this thing again, and we'll go to this one. And so how does, <coughs> so if we have different orbits, let me just erase this. So if we get another planet here further away and another one further away okay and how does this like this is how far away it is and let's say the planet's right here this is how far it's further and then this one say it's over here it's even further so how does this distance this radius away affect how long it takes to go around the body it's orbiting around or revolving around so Kepler was able to find out, though, that this is affected by, let's see here, so this is affected, let me say it the right way here, so depending on the distance, we can see the t, this is really the period, the time it takes to go around, if we square that, that's about equal to the radius cubed, okay? So what this says, the further away you are, the longer it takes for you to go around this sun one time. And we can see that if we ever looked, if you've ever looked at a, like a model of Mercury and all the planets going around, they travel much faster around the sun. They take, don't take as much time to go around the sun as planets that are much further away. And that's kind of proven by Newton's, or Kepler's third law, okay? So, and we can determine how far away it is, the radius, and say that's going to have a pretty good picture of how long it takes. Further away, the longer it takes to go around the sun. The closer, the less time it takes. That's kind of, and that's kind of our notes on Kepler's. Hopefully that you understand a little bit better. And make sure you annotate these and turn them in.